Hello, Rachel here, Treehouse Knits, episode 40. How are you all? It's been a while since I've been here. Thanks for joining me today. You can find me as Treehouse Knits on pretty much all the socials, especially on Instagram. I'm on Ravelry as Treehouse Knits, and I do have a website, thknits.com, where I put the show notes for this episode. I will put the link to them in the description box below. So how is everyone doing out there? It's great to be back here on the YouTubes. I have been doing uh, quite a bit of making the last month or so, and I look forward to sharing it with you. So today we're gonna talk a little bit about some questions that we had in the last episode, some finished objects of mine, um, crochet, cross stitch, knitting, a few works in progress that I have going on right now. We'll chat a little bit about uh, some events that are coming up, and I do have a giveaway which will be at the end of the episode, so stay tuned for that. Let's just jump right in and get started. I hope you guys have been doing some really fun, creative, crafty things that I know you all love to do just like I do. I have had a little bit of um, arm pain when and shoulder pain when I've been knitting, so I haven't been knitting as much, but uh, that has led me to do some other creative activities in the fiber arts, that being some crochet, some spinning, uh, even some weaving, which I look forward to sharing with you. So let's just uh, get started and talk about, well, first of all, let's do the drawing from last week. Last episode, I asked you what your favorite local yarn store was, and we had over a hundred or so responses. I will insert the video Congratulations, here. the random YouTube comment picker picked Patty Cacciabaudo from, um, and she said that her local yarn store is the Yarn Barn in Woodbridge, Connecticut. So thank you, Patty. If you could get a hold of me, you can email me at treehouseknits at gmail.com and let me know you saw this episode, that you were the winner, and I will send to you on your Ravelry um, page a pattern of your choice, $7 or less. Just give me your Ravelry handle and we can take care of that. Thank you so much for commenting and thanks to everyone else who shared with us the local yarn, yarn stores of your choice. That is an amazing list of yarn stores all over the world actually. So if you are planning on traveling this summer, feel free to take a look at that list of amazing local yarn stores all over. I think it might help some of you as you travel. So we had a few questions the last episode. Holly asked, what is under my e-wheel? In the last episode, I shared with you uh, just myself spinning up some stuff, um, some fiber. And what is underneath my wheel is this. It actually came with the electric eel wheel. It's just a basic, uh, I think it might be a hot pad trivet, and you just set the e-wheel on that and it does make it a lot quieter. So I think in the in the early stages of the electric e-wheel development, here I'll unplug mine so I can show it to you again. In the early stages of it, it was a little louder than some people like, so uh, I think the manufacturer thought, well, let's just send out some of those pads, and it does help with the sound. Currently, I'm spinning up some merino. Check that out. It's turning out really pretty. I'm trying really hard not to make these colors kind of muddle all together. We'll see how it turns out, but I'll share it with you on the next episode. Hopefully, I'll get it done then. Another question we had was from Aaron. What festivals am I attending this year? It's a good question because I'm actually attending a festival this Sunday. I'll be at YarnCon in Chicago. I think that's April 8th, maybe? I don't know. It's this Sunday in a few days. And uh, I know Saturday is usually the busier day, but Sunday is what worked for me and some of my guild member friends. So we will be headed there. If you are if you happen to be at YarnCon on Sunday and you see me, just feel free. I'd love to say hi to anybody who is a viewer of this uh, podcast for sure. I am looking forward to YarnCon. For those of you who haven't been to YarnCon in Chicago, it's a really cool regional festival where uh, it's a lot of independent dyers and makers, creatives uh, that all come together. The show's getting bigger and bigger every year. And uh, if you're ever in the Chicago area in April, do check that out. It's in a really cool 
building in the West Loop of Chicago. So there's decent parking, but the building is actually the Plumbers Union Hall, and I think it probably was built in the early 1900s, so it's a, just a really cool old kind of art deco-y sort of building. Cool fixtures, neat design. It's just really fun to be there, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing a bunch of you, hopefully. Our third question was from Anissa. Where do you purchase a color wheel? Last episode we talked about color and kind of how I think about color in my projects and I shared with you my color wheel. You can find a color wheel at any art store. Uh, they sell color wheels at all the big box, Joann's, Michael's, and they even have color wheels on Amazon.com. So just go into Amazon, type in color wheel, and you'll find them there. They're really in a lot of places. Okay, so whew, got that stuff out of the way. Um, let's talk a little bit about some finished objects. I was in the mood, I was inspired by a podcaster. Uh, she actually does floss too. She does cross stitch and she does knitting. And her name is, she is Mischievous Stitches on YouTube. And she has been crocheting baskets. It got me inspired to do some crochet. Crochet actually felt better on my, my um, shoulders and arm than knitting did. So I went ahead and started with some yarn that I have had for a long time. I shared this on Instagram as well, so maybe you've already seen it. But I had picked up this yarn at, in New York City at uh, Vogue Knitting Live a few years ago. And it's this t-shirt yarn, super soft and uh, just kind of made myself a little basket. I followed a tutorial from Jada in Stitches on YouTube, super easy to follow if you've ever used a crochet hook. I mean, all you really need to know how to do are two different types of stitches and she shows you really well. But this yarn, I love it, this Fabu Loop yarn. It's really soft, it was thick yarn, so I ended up using I bought a crochet hook, size PQ, 15 millimeter. I just picked up a clover. I really liked it. It's a plastic, this is more of a rubbery feeling, so it's nice on your grip. And this plastic is so smooth and the yarn just slipped so nicely. This was such an enjoyable project. So if you can get your hands on this type of yarn, I love the clover, clover hook with it and the pattern from Jada in Stitches, I will put that in the show notes. She's got all kinds of great crochet patterns, really patterns for knitters who dabble a little in crochet but are intimidated by the charts. You just follow along with her on the YouTube and it's really cool. So I, um, yeah, I ended up with a really cool basket. I just love to put my yarn and stuff in it. I haven't finished it completely because I'm, I'm trying to decide if I want to put some handles on it or not. But I kind of like it as just a basket that sits on my desk. So that's my first finished object. I, I wanted to keep making bags. So I remembered that I had an old sweater that I had knit out of a cotton tape yarn that I never liked. I never wore it. It was too heavy of a sweater. It's an Aran weight cotton tape. So I ended up, after a few attempts, I first held it single and I ended up, it just was too floppy of a bag. So then I held it three and now I wanted it thicker. So I ended up holding it six and here is the bag that I ended up with. I put some handles on it. Again, this was a Jada in stitches pattern and it's got a circular bottom to it and she just, teaches you how to pick up the stitches. I love how it turned out. When you hold the six together, the um, pattern kind of does a cool fade effect, or the colors do a fade effect. So that's my second basket that I worked on. And then I, I remembered that I had a yarn from a haiku called Tea Cakes. It's 51% cotton scraps, 49% scraps of undetermined fiber content. <laughs> it actually says that. And I ended up with a smaller basket for on my desk to maybe hold some of my knitting tools or it could be a yarn bowl. Same pattern, 
not a huge fan. After I knit with this amazing yarn, this was just really, it's a, it's a rougher, it's not the sheen, it doesn't have a nice sheen or anything, but it's fine. I probably would have really loved it had I not used the uh, Fabu Loop before, but another just basket to sit. I haven't finished this one either, but you get the gist. I kind of was a little basket crazy for a while there. <laughs> The last finished object I want to show you is my spinning this week. I ended up spinning up some fiber from Into the World. This is called Mud Bogs and Moonshine, and it's her Targi base. I love Targi. Um, I've used it in a couple of sweaters, and I just find it's really soft yarn. It kind of feels luxurious yarn, but the price is nice and it's a hard working, hard wearing yarn. Here is what my skein turned into and I'm so happy with it. I love that khaki green with the gray and that chocolatey brown in there. I did a fractal spin again. This is a two ply and I'm not sure how much I actually got out of this, but I'm thinking that except for that right there. This is one of the, my um, spins that is a little bit of a finer weight, so I'm excited to knit this one up. If you don't know much about Targi, I've kind of did a little research with my Felice and Fiber Source book, and uh, Targi actually was created uh, in 1926 by researchers at the USDA Sheep Experiment Station in Dubois, Idaho. They bred Rambouillet rams to Corydale and Lincoln Rambouillet ewes. Their goal was to produce an all-around dual-purpose sheep that would thrive on range and farm operations in the states of the West and the High Plains. They named their new breed Targi, after the national forest where the station's sheep grazed in the summer months. A large framed animal, the Targi indeed, has superb production traits for both meat and fleece. From its fine wool ancestors, the Targi gets fine fiber diameters, which means its wool is very soft, yet its handling qualities feel like they come more from its longwell forebears. The fiber diameters overlap those of medium to so-called strong merinos and of many rambolets. Targi wool has loft and good elasticity, although of the sort that makes it lively and supple rather than springy, and it lends itself to the sorts of fabrics you want to wrap yourself in for both softness and a bit of elegance. On the sheep, Targi is a dense, uniform wool. In the hand, it feels a good deal airier than that description makes it sound. It's quite consistent throughout a single fleece and within the breed. It also felts well. So that's my Targi, and those are my finished objects for today. Happy finishes, everyone. Last Saturday was our uh, Greater Grand Rapids Knitting Guild Spring Retreat, and the topic this year was weaving for knitters. We had uh, Jennifer, who is from Craft Sanity. Maybe you've listened to her podcast. She's been on the air for several years. She's really involved in the fiber community, uh, really nationally as well as the owner and creator of her own line of looms, Craft Sanity Looms. She is a local to us and uh, did a uh, day-long class on uh, loom weaving. And th these were table, um, I think they're like, are they called pin looms? I don't know exactly what they're called, but it's basically, I'll insert a picture here of the class, some of the pictures from the class and the looms that we used. on weaving what could be a cowl, but mine turned out a little stiffer than I would want for a cowl. The yarn I used, I will insert here. So 
So what I think I'm going to do is make a bag out of this. I happen to have a cork base that I think I will stitch in. And then I also picked up last year at the Michigan Fiber Festival some handles. So if you can envision this as a bag with these handles, that is the plan. I will share with you what I end up with hopefully on the next episode. But look at how the weaving turned out. This was so much fun. Once we got the warp lined up, it was super easy to weave away. And again, this is just a uh, couple skeins of the same self-striping yarn. And then um, I added in some gray because I was running out of yarn. But uh, that was super fun. It used up a lot of yarn and we had a great time. Let's talk a little bit about stitching. Stitching has been another thing that has felt good, fine to do with my shoulder and arm issues. So I've been doing quite a bit of stitching. It's been really relaxing and I'm enjoying, now that I'm getting better at threading the needle and starting out the stitches, just the whole management of the materials. It's similar to knitting. Once you are comfortable managing your materials and not getting things tangled, at least for me, then it, then it starts to be enjoyable. So the first, so I have this series that I got from, I got this last summer, I think, from Country Cottage Needleworks. It's a seasonal series. I have now finished fall or autumn And I don't know if I'm going to be framing them or what I'm going to be doing with this, but this is the autumn. Look at the pumpkins. I love that gold over dye um, floss that makes the house look nice, gives it dimension. It's really fun to do words. So that is autumn. I have used... Uh, the floss that I've used is called Threadworks, and I get it at my local needlepoint shop. It is a really nice over-dyed um, brand of floss. Now, I've started and I'm almost done with spring, so here comes spring. This is the one I've really been working on the most recently. You can see how far I've gotten. Look at the house, and there's blue and those bright flowers. I love the colors that I picked. I... I, again, this is all Threadworks. I didn't use any of the called for flosses. I just decided to use colors that would go well in my house. And all I have to do is that uh, side panel there with the pot of flowers growing up, and I should be finished. So that's spring. I'll just show you once summer comes. This is what summer is gonna look like. And then I'm really looking forward to doing winter. There's, well, the glare is not so great, but anyways, that's the series. I kind of envision, maybe what I'll do is frame them all somehow and just kind of move them through the seasons on my mantle or someplace in the house. So that's the plan there. I've been using Q-snaps um, instead of, a shake here, instead of, um, Oh, like a round hoop. I do like the Q-snaps, but I'm starting to think I'd like to try getting a scroll frame. So if any of you have experience with scroll frames, if you want to just let me know what brand you might use and pros and cons, what you like, what maybe you're looking to get, that would be great. And I am still using my wonderful cross-stitch um, bag that I got from Opera Joe. There's her stamp from stitching the high notes. She does have some bags, I think, right now in her shop. She had an update over the weekend. I love it. I love that I can see through it. I usually will put my project in so the project shows through the, the bag. But check her out. So that is the majority of my stitching. I have some... Except... Um, in addition to that seasonal stitch, I also found a pattern that is Do Re Mi Fa Sol La Ti Do. 
and the words say, when you know the notes to sing, you can sing most anything. It's a sound of music uh, kind of stitch. And we are, my family, the four of us, are planning a trip to Germany and Austria this summer. We will be going to Salzburg, doing some of the Sound of Music stuff, so I thought it would be really fun to do a stitch. Um, the Sound of Music, just to remind me of the trip in the future. So, that's in the works. And then I have also been eyeing Savior's Praise by Shakespeare's Peddler. What I love about it especially is the border. I love all of the fruits of the spirit words around the border. I love that ship in the border. It just looks like it would be really fun to stitch. I um, The name on the sampler is a fictitious name. I will probably put my own name in there, maybe the date. But um, yeah, that one is definitely on my list of um, stitches that I would like to do in the future. The final thing that I've been working on is some design work. I was inspired, let me back up, in August is the Michigan Fiber Festival. That is another festival that I will be attending this year. And they have um, issued out a challenge, which I think sounds really fun and it has inspired me. It's the Midwest uh, Michigan Fiber Festival New Fiber Arts Challenge. What they've basically done is given us an inspiration picture and they're asking us, well, they said it, the challenge is open to all areas of the fiber arts, knitting, spinning, weaving, felting, basket making, dyeing, crocheting, and more. Taking the above photo as your inspiration for the color palette for your project, create a fiber arts project using your favorite skill set. This is a fun fiber challenge, so don't be afraid to participate if you're just a beginner. The judging will be more on overall effect than the technical perfection of the project. So we're supposed to pick the colors from the photo you best you think best represents fall in Michigan. You can use all of the colors in the photo or just highlight a particular color. Then they say to create your project in one of these categories. So there's categories for spinners, knitters and crocheters, weavers, felters, basket makers, dyers, and any other fiber arts. So this photo, you know how much I love color work mittens. It has inspired me to design a color work mitten pattern. So I've been working on that um, pattern. You know, I did the the um, I designed the pattern for my parents 50th wedding anniversary last year and this year I'm just really inspired to be doing some designs for color work mittens so a little sneak preview here's my thumb that's all I'm going to share with you it's still I've got the pattern uh, charted out and now I'm in the process of knitting up the pattern. If any of you would be interested in test knitting in the future, do let me know. Um, you can either message me at treehouseknits at gmail.com or just mention down in the comments below you might be interested. I don't really have much of a time frame right now as to when I would need the test knitting, but it is a, um, a Michigan-inspired kind of mitten. So I've been working on that, and then that has inspired me. You know, when you're looking at motifs and trying to find things for the mitten, for that pattern, I'm coming across other motifs that are inspiring me for other mittens, so I'm kind of a little mitten crazy right now on my um, stitch mastery program. Speaking of programs for charting, I used Chart Finder for a while, then I used Stitch, Stitch, I can't think of what it's called, Fiddle, Stitch Fiddle for a while. And just recently, I've kind of broken down and purchased Stitch Mastery, which I know a lot of the uh, better known color work designers use. And it's so far been a really cool program. And uh, so that's what I'm working on right now, Stitch Mastery. If any of you have any other uh, programs that you love for uh, charting color work or even just um, knitting design, let me know. I would, I'd be very interested in learning more about that. So, hmm, have you guys seen the um, Knit Crate preview yet for April? 
I'm gonna put a link down below to the Knit Crate. If you subscribe to Knit Crate on YouTube, you get their really short monthly updates on what's coming in the next package. You've gotta check out April's. It's beautiful. The colors in the membership crate are gorgeous. It's this beautiful red color, and then I, it was a, an, a beautiful blue. The red is what I've got my fingers crossed. Uh, that they send to me, but as soon as I get it, I will share it with you. It's a new blend for them, a new fiber blend for them. So I'm excited to check it out. It's a DK weight. And then the sock membership is also gorgeous. Right now, I know that they're having a, I think they're still having the buy one, get one free knit crate offer going on. If not, maybe that was just a March thing. But if you use my link below, you will get 20% off your first knit crate order. I know I've said it before, but I love the Knit Crate stuff that they're sending me. And now they're adding other things in the Knit Crate. Mm -hmm. I got for March, I think I showed this to you. Did I show you this bag last time? I got this really cute project bag. Oh, I love, look at this colorway. It's gorgeous. This is their house brand, Knitology, and it's a cashmere blend. I cannot wait to see what this knits up like. And then the pattern book, which you have to check out. April's, I think it's the Artisan Crate. They don't do Artisan Crates anymore. They do pop-up shops. But there is a, if I can find it, I'm going to put a picture of it in here. I have not been into wraps lately, but check out this, this shawl or wrap. It's gorgeous. The first project is called the Hens and Chicks Shawl and it's designed by Dallas Ann Prentice. It is a garter stitch crescent shawl with lace edging, absolutely beautiful. You could wear this so many different ways, but I think my favorite way is just like as a scarf replacement with a little bit more shoulder and just toss it over your shoulder. So you've got kind of a cow neck going on here and you've got the, t the ends like a scarf it's a really hip way to wear it, I think, and very cozy and comfortable. All right, I think we've come to the end of episode 40. So for this week, I would like to give out another pattern. Let's do another giveaway. Any pattern of your choice on Ravelry, I will send it to you via Ravelry, $7 or under. I just recently was listening to someone. I don't remember what podcast it was, but they were talking about misunderstood song lyrics. And... I mean, it, it was making me laugh hysterically. What came to my mind is a friend of mine thought the Rolling Stones' Beast of Burden was not Beast of Burden, but thought it was, I'll never be your pizza burning. So that one I think is hilarious. I am curious if you've ever had a song where you misunderstood the lyrics and what was it? Just comment down below and that will qualify you to be in the running for the giveaway for this week. If you can't think of anything, I don't know, just just uh, ask a question or make any comment, but I'm really curious about other people's misunderstood song lyrics. Well, I think that'll do it. Maybe I'll see some of you at YarnCon on Sunday. If not, you know when I'll see you. I'll see you on the next episode of Treehouse Knits. Bye.